one of the important things to uh, realize as a human being is that there are always situations that alarm us and they should and they produce a fear reaction uh, so the ability to to have that reaction is very important to feel that reaction is very important it's a signal that there's danger in the environment and we need to use the strategy that allows us to cope with that danger now Many times we have fear reactions when there's no actual danger. And that's a problem because we're constantly activating that fear response, which has biochemical implications, which eventually can lead us into uh, becoming less focused, unable to concentrate, even into post-traumatic stress. So, to know when it really is an accurate experience of, I should be afraid of this. And when it's fear produced more by imagination. Now, sometimes that's hard to determine. If your boss is saying to you, if you don't do better, you're gonna be fired by next week, you know you're not gonna die, but it does produce fear. When you're activated, there are strategies to respond in a healthy way and deactivate yourself. Because it's the deactivation that stops the biochemical fear response, minimizes the stress caused, for instance, by that kind of threat, and allows you to come back to kind of a normal functioning baseline. But, but many of us live in a world where we stop distinguishing that there really is a tiger over there and it may eat me, or that I'm imagining that there might be a tiger over there. And when we are uh, activated, nobody teaches us to recognize that. And nobody teaches us, okay, now as you take appropriate reaction, how do you dim the situation? How do you sh slow down and stop the activation and go back to uh, a normal balanced way of, re of reacting? People don't notice that they're very anxious until it's up here. So that's the first step. To build in an awareness, oh, this is producing some anxiety in me. The second step, depending on the situation, is given that I can't change this situation or I can't leave this situation, because if you leave the situation, you probably will calm down. But I can't say to my boss, I'm leaving, I'll be back in an hour. What are the strategies you can use to calm down? One of the things that, that you can do, for instance, is you're coming home from work. How many of us come home from work, we're like this, and we rush into our house or our apartment? And I always say to people, when you get out of your car, before you even approach your house or your apartment, stop. Just spend a, 20 seconds realizing I'm not at work. When you put the key in the door, the realization, I'm coming home. And even repeating it to yourself two or three times, it shifts you. In more, less than one minute, your brain will shift because you've now connected into a different experience and that will deactivate you. Um, with somebody who's been highly traumatized and they, they suddenly hear a loud noise and they think somebody may be shooting with a gun. Just simply the phrase, that was then, this is now. That was then, this is now. Some way of helping your biological system and your intellectual system to communicate. When I realize I'm not in Vietnam, I'm in Italy, that probably was the sound of a truck or something else that's not putting me in danger. But I have to be able to make that first separation. There I was in Vietnam in the past. That was then. I'm in Italy now. Simple strategies like that really do keep people from burning out. Do, do they help to make us more trauma resistant? We would be foolish to think that, well, 
I was either traumatized or not, and I, I'll avoid trauma. You're going to be traumatized in your life, many times in your life. Sometimes little ones, sometimes big ones. But there are literally strategies, like going to the gym, that allow you to increase your ability to resist the negative impact of the experience. And that's a lot of what my training is about.